Okay, so picture this. You're running Proxmox, right? You've got Plex humming along nicely, maybe a torrent client doing its thing, and you need to give them access to your media library. Yeah, super common scenario. So you think, all right, let's just mount that SMB share right on the Proxmox host itself. Easy peasy, everyone can access the files, problem solved. But uh, what if I told you that this seemingly simple solution could actually be a huge security risk for your entire setup. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things that seems like a good idea at first. You know, just get things up and running quickly. Right, convenience first. But today, we're going to really take a deep dive into why mounting SMB shares directly on your Proxmox host might not be the best idea in the long run. We're talking performance hits, security vulnerabilities, a bunch of stuff that could really come back to bite you. So let's break it all down. Why is this seemingly harmless little shortcut actually such a potential problem? Well, the first issue is what I like to call the illusion of simplicity. On the surface, mounting an SMB share on your Proxmox host seems incredibly straightforward. You install mm -hmm. SIFTILs, edit your et cetera stab, mount the share, boom, done. You've got access from your containers, Plex is streaming, torrents are downloading, everything looks great. Yeah, you get that initial when you think, hey, I'm a sysadmin genius. Right, exactly. <laughs> but this initial simplicity can really mask some underlying complexities. It's never as easy as it seems, is it? Nope, not really. Yeah. Because what you've essentially done is create this really tight coupling between your Proxmox host, which is the bedrock of your entire virtualization infrastructure, and these user-facing services like Plex and Torrent clients. And remember, these are services that could be exposed to the internet, either directly or indirectly. So you're basically giving these potentially vulnerable workloads the keys to the kingdom. That's a great way to put it. You're letting them interact directly with your Proxmox host's file system, which is a huge no-no from a security perspective. It's kind of like, um you know, letting a stranger borrow your car without checking their license first, you're taking a big risk. Absolutely. And the consequences of this tight coupling are pretty significant. It increases what we call the blast radius if something goes wrong. If one of those user-facing services has a, a vulnerability or worse, gets compromised, the potential damage to your entire Proxmox setup is much, much greater because of this direct mount. So the damage could cascade, essentially. Exactly. Instead of being contained to just that one compromised container, it could spread to your entire host. Oof, not good. Okay, so we've got potential security nightmares brewing. But what about the performance side of things? I know the sources mentioned some pretty noticeable downsides there as well. Oh, yeah. SMB is not exactly known for its blazing speed, especially in this kind of scenario. In fact, the source material describes it as clunky, chatty, and slower than you think. Not exactly glowing praise, is it? Nope, not at all. And this isn't just theory. Many users who have tried both SMB and NFS in their Proxmox setups report that SMB feels significantly slower and less responsive. They experience lag, stutters, just general unpredictability. I can definitely see how that would be frustrating, especially when you're trying to stream high-definition media from your Plex server or when your torrent client is trying to move large files around. Right, and when you factor in that the SMB share is mounted through the Proxmox host and then shared again to the containers, you're adding yet another layer of overhead that can further impact performance. So it's like adding extra steps to an already inefficient process. Exactly. And this is where NFS really shines in comparison. It has a much cleaner protocol, tends to handle permissions more smoothly in a Linux environment, and generally behaves more like a native file system. So if you're looking for speed and efficiency, mounting NFS directly inside your LXC or VM, bypassing the Proxmox host altogether, is usually the way to go. Absolutely, it'll make your life a lot easier, that's for sure. Okay, so we've got performance issues, potential security risks, anything else lurking in the shadows? Well, there's one more major hurdle that often trips people up, permissions. Oh yeah, permissions, always a fun topic. Right, especially when you're working with unprivileged LXC containers. See, SMB mounts need to play nice with Linux user and group IDs, UIDs, and GIDs. But unprivileged containers run with their own isolated user namespaces, meaning that the user IDs inside the container don't necessarily match up with the user IDs on the host system. So you've got this mismatch, this translation layer that needs to happen, and things can get complicated quickly. Exactly. You end up having to fiddle with all sorts of obscure mount options like CUDA 11000, GITA 11000, file mode 0775, trying to get everything aligned perfectly between the host and the container. And if you don't get it right, you could end up with permission errors, files being inaccessible, or even worse, security vulnerabilities. Exactly. It's a recipe for trouble. 
And what's worse, some people try to sidestep these permission issues by running their containers in privileged mode or by mapping the root user inside the container. But that just defeats the whole purpose of using containers, doesn't it? The whole point is to have that isolation, that separation between the host and the container. Exactly. You're essentially throwing security out the window for the sake of convenience, which is never a good trade-off. So what's the solution then? If mounting SMB directly on the host is so problematic, what's the recommended best practice? The best and safest approach is to mount your SMB or NFS shares directly inside the VM or container that actually needs access to the data. So instead of having a central mount point on the host, each container manages its own storage connections. Exactly. That way, if one container gets compromised, the damage is isolated. Your Proxmox host remains secure. It's all about containment, isn't it? Minimizing the blast radius. Absolutely. And it has other benefits too. Permissions management becomes much easier because you're working within the context of a single container. Network hygiene improves because you're keeping the Proxmox host on a separate, more secure network segment. And troubleshooting is simpler because issues are isolated to a specific container. Makes perfect sense. So mounting inside the container is the ideal solution, but I know the source mentioned another option, bind mounting from the host. What are the caveats there? Bind mounting can be a useful technique, especially for certain types of applications that have limitations with directly mounting network shares. But it's important to remember that if you're bind mounting a share that's mounted on the host, you're still inheriting some of the security risks we've discussed. So it's not a perfect solution, but sometimes it's necessary. Exactly. And if you do use bind mounting, you need to be extremely careful with permissions. Use the most restrictive settings possible and make sure the UID and GID mappings are correct. The source mentions using lxc.mount.entry in the container's configuration file to really lock things down. So it's definitely an advanced technique that requires a lot of care and attention to detail. Absolutely. Now, speaking of alternatives, the source also brought up something interesting. Using full VMs instead of LXCs, especially when you're dealing with a lot of network shares. Why is that? Yeah, why do some sysadmins prefer VMs in these situations? The main reason is that VMs offer a higher level of isolation and a more traditional operating system environment. Each VM is essentially a self-contained Linux machine with its own kernel. You can mount SMB or NFS shares directly inside the VM without having to worry about the complexities of LXC user namespaces. So it simplifies things from a permission standpoint. Big time. And the source also mentioned the possibility of passing through a virtual disk to the VM that points to the SMB share. That way the VM has direct block level access to the storage further increasing isolation and security. It sounds like a really elegant solution. Of course, VMs do use more resources than LXEs, but the added security and simplicity might be worth the trade-off, especially on modern hardware. Yeah, for certain workloads, it's definitely worth considering. All right, so to recap, mounting SMB shares directly on your Proxmox host, while tempting in its simplicity, can lead to a whole host of problems performance issues, security vulnerabilities, and permission headaches. It's a classic case of a shortcut turning into a long detour. Exactly. And the real takeaway here is that your Proxmox host is the heart of your virtualization environment. It needs to be protected and treated with care. Keep your user-facing services contained, mount network shares inside the containers that need them, and resist the urge to take shortcuts that could compromise your entire setup. It's about thinking long-term, isn't it? Building a solid foundation for your home lab or small business. Absolutely. So next time you're setting up a service that needs access to network storage, take a moment to consider the potential risks. Mounting directly inside the container or using a VM might take a bit more effort up front, but it'll save you a lot of headaches in the long run. Excellent advice. Well, thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of Proxmox storage. And for our listeners out there, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you encountered any of these issues with SMB mounts? What strategies have you used to manage storage securely and efficiently in your Proxmox environment? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, happy virtualizing.